Hello, and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be discussing functions. So what exactly is a function? A function is a block of organized, reusable code that is used to perform a single related action. Functions can go by different names in other languages. They may be referred to as methods, procedures, and subroutines. Now, functions are always part of a class. Functions can also return back data, but this is optional. Keep in mind about the scope priority. Scope priority is as the following. You have your local variables, then your class members, and then your global variables. This episode won't go into much detail about scope priority, just keep in mind that variables declared at the function level can only be used at the function level. Now, this is what a function looks like in GDScript. You have the function keyword spelled F-U-N-C, followed by a unique name for your function, followed by parentheses, and inside the parentheses, you can include an optional parameter, followed by the colon symbol. Keep in mind, when coding inside your function, you need to use tab indentation. This lets the compiler know that all the code you're writing belongs to the function. One thing to note is that you will throw an error if you have an empty function. To avoid the error, at minimum, simply provide the pass keyword. Now the pass keyword does nothing except prevents the compiler error for empty functions. The pass keyword can also be used in loops to avoid the compiler errors for empty loops as well. Let's take a quick example at the pass keyword. So you have your function, you use the pass keyword, in the first line, and then after that, you have a variable declaration. Well, the pass keyword does absolutely nothing, doesn't interfere with your code, and you still execute your variable declaration. Keep in mind, if you declare your variable inside the function, the variable x in this case can only be used inside this function. It cannot be used outside this function. This is what you call function scope. Moving on, to create the basic minimum function in Godot, GDScript, all you have to do is use the function keyword followed by a unique name, followed by parentheses and the colon symbol. However, if you want to pass data into your function, you can declare what is called a parameter. Now, parameters are variables. They can be used in the function and only in the function level that its name is used in. Using the parameter name outside the function will throw an error. You can also declare data types to your parameters as well. This is for type safety. Keep in mind that if you use a function and pass a variable, or rather a value that is not part of the declared data type for that parameter, you will throw an error. On top of that, you can also declare a default value to your parameter. To declare a default parameter to your value, simply use the colon symbol followed by the equal sign. Lastly, using a literal value or a variable. One thing to keep in mind is that data type is inferred by the default value. This means you get the power of your data type in parameter along with a default value. Now, if you wanted to write it longhand instead of shorthand, this is what it would look like. You would have your parameter followed by colon symbol, then the data type, then an equal sign followed by your default value. But keep in mind at the bottom that typing it out like that is the same as shorthanding it with the colon sign and apologies colon, symbol, equal sign, and then your default value. Now, one thing with functions is that you can return back data types to the function that called it. To do that, all you have to do is use the dash symbol followed by the arrow key symbol that's pointing to the right. Lastly, using the data type you want to return back. Now, keep in mind, you also need to provide the return keyword somewhere in your function code followed by a value with the declared data type as your return type in the function declaration. So basically anything after the return keyword, also referred to as a return statement, will stop the function and return back that value that's after the return keyword when the function is called. Now, the return statement is used to terminate control of the function and returns control back to the calling function. You can use return statements to get out of for loops, while loops as well. 
One thing to also note is that any data type you would use to declare a variable can be used as a return data type for your function. There is also one more keyword we need to go over and that is the void keyword. Basically what the void keyword or rather what you're trying to tell the compiler when you try to specify the return type as void is that you don't want to return anything. Basically void is an empty return type. Now, when you are returning a return type set as void, what you're telling the compiler is that the function doesn't return back any values. To have a function satisfy the void return type, simply type out the return keyword followed by nothing. This is also called an expressionless return statement. Now there are best practices to naming a function. You can come up with any naming convention you want for functions, just make sure to stay consistent with your naming conventions throughout your code base. When I program, I personally like to use camel cases for functions and the first word in my function will always be a verb. Let's take a look at some coding example. So as our first example, I have a basic function. It doesn't accept any parameters and it doesn't return anything. We use the pass keyword. But even though you use the pass keyword, you're still returning a null value. As a matter of fact, you could replace the pass keyword with the return keyword and nothing changes. You still return a null value. Next, we have a basic function, but this time we have a parameter. Now keep in mind that the parameter is function scoped, which means we can only use this parameter in this specific function called basic param. As you can see, we have a print statement that will print out a string followed by the parameter. And of course, we have a expressionless return statement. Again, this returns back no, and all we do is print out to the console. If we go down, we have an example of a function that accepts a parameter with a specified data type. In this case, our param will only accept strings. As you can see here, you will throw an error if your parameter, or rather if you try to pass a value to your function in its parameter that is of a different data type. Now, we have the same thing as our previous function, except this time we have declared a default value to our parameter. So the data type is inferred when you use the colon equal sign symbols. The first thing you're telling the compiler is that you want the default value to be hello if a programmer chooses to use an empty function, or rather in this case, default param without a parameter. That means your parameter, or in this case, variable param, at minimum will have the default value hello assigned to it. However, if you do decide to pass a value, it has to be of type string. If you try to pass a different data type to this function, you're going to throw an error. And that is because these two symbols here infer a data type to your parameter based on the default value you are assigning to your parameter. This is the longhand version of what you're writing. As you can see here, this is no different than the code above or what we just previously saw. And this will make it clear. We have our parameter, we are assigning it a default data type, and we're assigning it a default value. Now last, what we have here is we have a function, forgive the, the color coding, it's a little off today, but no matter what, this code is still working. What we have is a function that's returning a void data type, which just means an empty return statement or expressionless return statement. This in itself just returns no, but it satisfies the void return type. Now again, do not confuse the return type void with the return type no. And over here below, we have a function with the return type of integer. What this means is we need to return an int in order to satisfy this requirement. If we don't return a value of that data type, what we're going to do is throw an error. Now let's go ahead and look at some best practices as examples. So you can see here, I've declared a variable player health assign the literal integer value 100, and I've declared a function called get player health, get being the verb and following best practice camel case. In this case, it does exactly what we expect it to. The name describes what our function does. And as you can see here, we're returning back the player's health. In this case, we're returning back 100. Now, I've also declared another function called heal player, very self-explanatory. And also I've declared a parameter value with the data type integer. 
This lets you know that our function only accepts values of the data type integer. And as you can see here, we're editing the player health by increasing the player's health by the health points received in the parameter. Now, this long statement here that I've written out to show as an example could also be written shorthand, such as the code below in the comments. Lastly, I have another function called damage player, and as you'd expect, we're decreasing the player health. As you can see here, I've declared a parameter with a data type of integer value, and we are now using the damage points parameter to deduct our current player health. In all cases, we're not returning any value, we're just doing something. But again, what all of these three things have in common is that they start with a verb, they stay in camel case, and they are consistent throughout my code base. Now, that's all I have for you in this episode. All of the code you've seen here are going to be uploaded to GitHub, so feel free to download that GitHub file and play around with functions. Again, thank you for watching this episode. I hope to see you in the next.